Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson on physical science. In this lesson, we're going to look at universal law of gravity, and then if we have time, we're going to move on to the atomic model. But before we do that, I just want to go through how to enroll into the grade 11 science class. So what you need to do is you need to go onto the internet and you need to type in this website address here www.toenable.org okay if you can't read it it's www.toenable.org and when you first go through it you'll have to the first time you use it you need to register so you need to type in your first name your last name and an email address and then click register and then the next time you will just log in okay you just put your name in your password if you click remember me it will remember your password it'll be great and then you can click login now when you do that you'll get to screen that looks like this and yours will just have choose subject, progress and results, and to enable help online. It won't have any of these blocks and obviously none of these messages either. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to click the red block and when you do that, you need to do that to choose the subject and you will choose grade 11 science. So you will go onto list and you'll choose physical science grade 11 and you'll click enroll. When, which will then kick you back to the screen and then you will see that you've got this beautiful physical science grade 11 block. Okay, now why is this important? Because not only will you be able to watch these videos with much more ease, but you will have the facility of these live assessments. And what we want to do is we want to run these live assessments. So what would happen is, for example, once I finish teaching I don't know, the law of universal gravitation. I could set up a live assessment on the internet and you guys could answer it. It would be multiple choice. It wouldn't be very big. But the reason I would want to do that is, again, you guys have to understand when, when teachers test, theoretically, it's supposed to be to test whether or not you understand the work, okay? So that's what I would be doing. I would be seeing that, and I don't get specific answers for specific people. I will see, oh, look, 20% of the class didn't understand question one. And question one is on universal law of gravitation when masses are changed, for example. So then what would happen is, sorry, what would happen is that we would then go through that section again specifically. Right, now, the other thing that's very important is upcoming events. And you, in order to view the live session, you need to select the upcoming events and you will get to this screen. Now, obviously, if you've enrolled in a whole bunch of classes, which you're quite welcome to do, then you will get all these upcoming events. However, if you've only enrolled in grade 11 physical science, you'll get one. Then you need to click the button, which says view event, and it'll bring you to a screen like this. And then you need to click open live TV link and you'll get to the screen. Now you're quite welcome to open the feed in a new tab, which will make the screen quite a bit, a bit bigger. So you might want to do that. And then you need to click the big green button that says join the event. When you click this button, it's either going to send you through to the recording or it's going to send you through to the live um, lesson that you're going watching now, okay? And there you go, you get to watch the live lesson. Now the cool thing is, and that is the other reason I want you guys to join the class, is then you can message the studio it means you can write me messages so if for example i'm busy going through you know, newton's law of universal gravitation and you've got a specific question from exams that you really don't understand then you can actually send me that question or if you're really desperate to do some chemistry and you would really like me to do that in the next bit after doing this newton's universal law of gravitation then you can message me and and we can rearrange our lessons. The whole point is that this is supposed to be feedback. We are going to be hoping to feed back to you guys and to basically give you what you need. Okay, so please note also that this message link, message the studio doesn't work unless it's a live session. Okay, right, so there you go. That is how to enroll into our class. Now let's get going with the universal law of gravity. So, 
Newton came up with this law, which states that everybody in the universe, and remember I mentioned this before, and I have done a theory in the last lesson on this, but I wanted to remind you, because it's quite a long time since Thursday, and I wanted to remind you what the theory was before we moved on to some more exam paper questions. So it says each body in the universe attracts every other body or every, yeah, with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. Okay, so what we're saying, we're saying that he said that force was directly proportional to the product of their masses. So it's M1 multiplied by M2. Force is also proportional to 1 over R squared. Therefore, you can combine it and go force is proportional to M1, M2 over R squared. Okay. In other words, if this ratio went up, then force would go up. If this ratio went down, then this would go down. And then there was a guy called Lord Cavendish who did hundreds of experiments and eventually worked out universal constant G. And both this formula and the 6.7 times by 10 to the minus 11 constant is on your formula sheet. So you don't have to memorize this at all. Okay, now, before we carry on with our exam questions, we need to talk a little bit about some definitions. And the first definition that we need to talk about is free fall. Free fall is defined as when something falls and the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. The only force acting on it is the force of gravity. So theoretically, on Earth, there is no such thing as free fall. Okay, because obviously there's a force of friction due to the air. But a lot of times when we do sums or problems in physical science, we say it's under free fall, in which case we're saying you can ignore the air friction. You can ignore the resistance due or the force of the air friction. Okay, weightlessness. This is the sensation that we experience when our weight appears to be zero. And I say appears to be zero because Effectively, our weight should never really be zero unless we are exactly the right distance between the planets and everything else. Astronauts experience this and weightlessness or something very akin to weightlessness. When I say that, I mean they do experience weightlessness, but obviously there's a tiny little bit of weight in on in space as well but yeah you can see what is actually this is is a simulator where these people are learning to be astronauts and they are experiencing weightless weightlessness finally the gravitational acceleration is the acceleration of an object in earth's gravitational field and this is little g and that is very much different from big g okay big g is called the universal gravitational constant, which is six point, well, it depends. I, I go look on your formula sheet, but at the moment, I think the formula sheet says 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11. I say this because I was taught 6.67, but anyway, 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11, whereas little g, little g, is dependent on the planet. It is the acceleration of an object in a planet's accelerate gravitational field, okay? And little g, little g on Earth is approximately, approximately 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? And that depends on where you are on Earth, okay? But we've round, we've decided, well, the scientists have decided that that's good enough for now. But please note that the acceleration is independent of the mass of the object. Okay, and we're going to prove that to you. So, Newton's law of universal gravitation says that force is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. Okay, so let's pretend we've got the planet and we've got a giant person. Okay, and the giant person has got a mass and the planet has a mass. Okay, and we are a distance r from the center of the planet. Okay. So do you agree that F is equal to G, M1, the mass of the man, M2, the mass of the earth, over R squared? Okay. Then we could also, using Newton's second law, say that the force that this man experiences, F, equals the mass of the man times acceleration due to gravity, right? 
Therefore, we can say that M1G, that, that F, is equal to that F, okay? We're saying that the Fs are equal, okay? The force due to Newton's law of gravitation and the force due to, due to Newton's second law of motion are equal, okay? But the mass of the man is the same in both cases, so we can cancel them. Okay, in fact, I think I do, no, I don't, darn. The mass of the man is the same, so therefore we can say G, the acceleration due to the planet we're on, okay, is independent of the mass of the object, okay? So the analogy I like to give is, let's say, for example, you put a box and let's make it, um, oh, it doesn't matter, two square meter blocks, okay, two, two, two cubic meter, two, 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 okay, and we put, I don't know, a really big object, let's pretend it's a really big animal, okay, don't worry, nothing is going to be hurt in this experiment, they're all going to have parachutes at the end, okay, right, so there's this really big animal, and in the other box, which is exactly the same size, exactly the same size, we are going to drop, we are going to drop, I don't know, a tennis ball. Okay, yeah, here's your tennis ball, right? Because of this, because these boxes have exactly the same size, do you agree that the air resistance on them will be exactly the same? Okay, because air resistance is dependent on the surface area of the object. Okay, so the air resistance is going to be the same. So if we drop them at exactly the same point in time from exactly the same height, then they will hit the ground at exactly the same time as well. Why? Because if you think about it, okay, let's think about this. We've got equations of motion, right? So do you agree the initial velocity is going to be zero, right? Because they are dropped. Their delta x is the same, okay, for both of them, because we are dropping them from the same height. The only force acting on them is the force of gravity. We can ignore the air friction because it's going to be the same on both of them. So the acceleration is gravity, and we want to know the delta t, okay, and we want to know the final velocity. The final velocity is going to be the same. If we go vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta x, do you agree the initial velocities are the same? They're both zero. Plus the acceleration due to gravity is g, and the delta x is the same for both of them. So therefore, we can say that the final velocity squared is equal to 2g delta x for both of these, which means the final velocity is going to be the same. Similarly, if we use vf is equal to vi plus a delta t, the initial velocity is zero, so we've got a delta t. The acceleration is little g, the acceleration due to the of being on Earth, acceleration due to gravity, okay, and the time that it's going is going to be exactly the same, so therefore the final velocity is going to be the same as well. Okay, so basically what we're saying is that your acceleration due to gravity is independent of the mass. It is dependent on the mass of the planet and how far you are from the center of the planet. So if I put this little person up here, this giant up here, there, yeah, there is the acceleration due to gravity is going to be less. And it's for this reason that as you climb up mountains, the air gets thinner and thinner, okay? Because what actually happens is that the particles on, of air are less strongly held by the force of gravity, and they're actually not held onto the surface. So that's why the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner and thinner. The particles of atmosphere are actually escaping our orbital our Earth. Amazing, hey? Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do before I even look at the examples, I'm going to write down my rule. I've got G, let's try again, F is equal to big G, M1, M2 over R squared, 
and big G is 6.7 times by 10 to the minus 11. Now you guys don't have to do that because you should have your formula sheet right in front of you. Whenever you start doing any questions or even when you're studying, you should have your formula sheet next to you because it should be a study aid and you should learn to use it as a tool to teach you to work out things, okay? So right, let's get started. It says the distance between the midpoints of two metal balls, P and Q, respectively of masses 55 and 70 kgs is 80 centimeters. Calculate the gravitational force of P exerts on Q. Okay, so let us write out our information. We've got M of P, M of Q, and we've got R. Okay, so the mass of P is 55 kgs. And I'm happy with that because kgs is the unit I should be working in. Okay, the mass of Q is 70 kgs, but what is wrong with this R? That is in centimeters, and we need to convert it into meters. So let me just remind you how to do that. It's King Henry died while drinking chocolate milk. I know there are lots of different ones, but this is the one. And the while is to do with meters or liters or whatever. So this placeholder is for our actual unit. It's a unit, okay? So in this case, it happens to be meters. And we want to go from here, centimeters, to meters. And we've got 80 centimeters. And we want to get from centimeters to meters. What do we need to do? We need to divide by a hundred so therefore this becomes naught comma eight zero meters you didn't have to put the second zero so this is naught comma eight okay now that we've got our information we can pop it into the formula so we go f is equal to now i've written the formula over there guys always write down your formula when you are doing your problem okay it is nice for the teachers to see that a you know which formula you're using or equation you're using secondly if you just go onto the next line and you make a mistake when you are substituting in, you can't get a method mark. Okay, if you don't write this formula down and you write 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 times by 55 times by 0, 0,8 over 70 squared. Let's say you just, uh, I don't know, made a silly mistake like that. Now, if you didn't write this down, they could look at this and go, what the heck is this person doing? No idea. Crosses out, no marks, okay? But if you've now written this down, you can get, oh, well, hang on. They kind of, I can see what they've done. They just made a silly mistake. I can give them some method marks. And then as you go further down in the question, they can give you more method marks if you've carried on using these incorrect values. Okay, so now that I've shown you why you very seriously should be writing down the formula that you're using, let's correct this and use the right numbers. So this should be 70 and that should be 0, 0,8 squared. And I say squared with a deeper voice because grade 10s, the number, grade 11s, my bad, sorry, my grade 11s, the number of my grade 12s that lose marks in these questions. And seriously, this is not a difficult question. The only hard thing so far has been to convert the 80 centimeters to meters is they forget to square. They forget to square. They might sometimes even write that square down and then forget it in the calculator. And it's so sad when you're marking someone's work and you can see they know what they're doing. And then because they made a stupid mistake by leaving out that squared on their calculator or in their writing, then they get it incorrect and they lose two valuable marks, which is very frustrating. Um, can anybody see an exponent? Um, there we go. Times by 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and actually I'm going to go all the way to the front and put this in a bracket and go all the way back and put it in a bracket just in case. 55, actually, and then I'm going to go delete times 55 times 70 all over and then it is going to be 0.8 close bracket and yes I am being pedantic with my brackets and just to make sure that I'm getting it right and then go equals okay so 
<laughs> this is naught point one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Grade eleven. So you do not write naught comma da 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 da. Okay, you write this in scientific notation, which means you need to be writing it like this type of thing. Yeah, six point seven times by ten to the negative eleven. So the way you work it out, if you haven't set the mode on your calculator, is you actually need to count, move this comma or full stop to behind the four. So it becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, and there it is. So it becomes four comma zero three. So it becomes four comma zero three times by 10 to the negative seven. And remember you're working out the four, so it's Newtons. Now, I specifically in this case did not set my calculator. You can set it, okay, but I specifically didn't because a lot of you guys seem to not be able to work out how to change your calculator readings. And you end up like this, and then you end up writing not coming, not, 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 not. but your answers are supposed to be in scientific notation. So some of you have set it up, okay, and it's obviously different whether you're using a Sharp or a Casio or my HP. So I'm not going to go through that with you. You guys can Google it or you can look in your manuals or if you don't have your manuals, go Google it. Okay, or ask your science teacher or your math teacher and they will show you how to do it. Okay, now it says if Q is replaced with a ball of mass 35 kgs. Okay, so here was P and here was Q, right? But Q had a mass of 70 kgs. So it's saying that P and Q are now changing. This was 35 and this was 70 and the distance between them was 106, sorry, it was 80 centimeters, right? Now they're saying Q is being replaced by a ball of mass 35 kgs, but the distance between them is increased to 160 centimeters. So do you agree that the new, it's not new distance is yeah, okay, it's now 160, and the new Q, whatever, is 35. Okay, and it says, determine the factor by which the magnitude of the force between them changes without calculating the gravitational force between them. Ah, okay. So let's have a look at this. First of all, do you agree the general formula for this is F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. Okay, but in our example, we had P and Q. We've got the mass of P, the mass of Q, and R squared. Now, in this new example, yeah, what's happened? Do you agree that Q has been replaced by 35 kg mass? But 35 is what related to 70? Do you agree that 35 is half of 70? So my new mass is going to be G mass of P and then it's going to be half the mass of Q, half the mass of Q, okay? The mass of Q is 70, and now this is 35, so it's half the mass of Q. All over, let's talk about the radius. Do you agree the radius used to be 80 centimeters? But now the distance between them is 160. So do you agree that the distance now is 2R? all squared and that's another place grade 11s where my students make serious errors that is where they don't they don't think to square the ratio of the r as well they will do this people will write it'll be g mp half mq and then they go to r squared that's not true the whole of the r is being squared Okay, so now we can fix that we can, by taking out the numbers and putting them in front. So I can go half G MPMQ and then we need to obviously fix this because we need to multiply it out. So it's 2 squared is 4 R squared. Okay, now do you agree that this is the original force? There's G, MP, MQ and R squared. So that's the original force. So we've actually got a half divided by 4, all times by the original force, F, right? Which is the same as a half times by 1 over 4. Because what do you do when you divide? You tip and times 
okay, the original f. So it's one eighth times by f. So it says, determine the factor by which the magnitude of the force between them changes. It is now one eighth of the original force. It is eight times smaller. You could even write this as eight times smaller. Okay. Right, so that's a very nice question. Those two were very, well, this was a bit kind of basic question, but this was a very nice question. And you guys need to learn how to do the ratio thing. I know a lot of students, they don't learn to do the ratio thing. They just substitute the numbers in. But yeah, you were actually given a specific exam question where it said without calculating the gravitational force between them again. So you couldn't just substitute and you actually had to show that you understood how to work out the ratios. Okay, let's do another question. And again, just to make it easy for us, I'm going to write down the formula. It's G is equal to, oh, I did it again. F is equal to big G, M1, M2 over R squared. And big G is 6.7 times by 10 to the minus 11. And remember, both of these are on your formula sheet. Now it says, an object is weighing 140 newtons on the surface of the earth is moved to position which is 6.7 times 10 to the 6 meters above the surface of the earth. Calculate the percentage by which its weight will change. Okay, so yeah, we've got the earth and yeah, we've got an object. Okay, now originally it was on the surface of the earth. Okay, so let's say originally F0. For F0, what do we have? We've got big G, which is normal. We've got the mass of the object, the mass of the earth over the radius of the earth all squared. Okay, so, and this is 140 newtons. Okay, so we know that originally F0 is equal to G, mass of the earth, mass, mass of the object, mass of the earth, over the radius of the earth all squared, right? Just what I've said, yeah. I was just putting it down. We don't need to write it down, okay? And that is equal to 140. So let's just write that as well. That's equal to 140. Okay, awesome. So that's what we've got originally, okay? Now what happens? Now they move this poor object to be over here. Okay. So now do you agree it is 6.7 times by 10 to the 6 meters above the surface of the earth? Okay, so now it is 6.7 times by 10 to the 6 meters above the surface of the earth. Okay, so if you go and look at it, sorry, that is going to be what? So now what do we have? We have got, we have got that this is F nu is G, mass of the object, mass of the earth, but now the new radius is radius of the earth plus 6.7 times by 10 to the 6 all squared. That is the new radius. Okay, do you understand that? That is the distance, the new distance that this thing is traveling through. Okay, now they're asking us to calculate the weight, the weight of the Sorry, I just wanted to check something. Okay, no. What are they asking us to do? They're asking us to find the percentage by which the weight will change. Hmm. Okay, um, and I see on the formula sheet here, it gives us the gravitational constant 6.67, but I'm going to carry on using 6.7 for this question. Okay, right, so it says calculate the percentage by which the weight will change, right? So do you agree that the G is the same? The mass of the object is the same, the mass of the earth is the same, and what is different? This is different. This is now bigger. Okay, by how much? By the radius of the earth plus 6.7 times by 10 to the 6. 
Okay, so now let us talk a little bit about what information you should know or that they're expecting you to know. And I'm hoping that you know that the radius of the Earth is what? Um, the radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers. Kilometers. Okay, so if we have to change that into meters, that is going to be 6,371,000 ,000 meters, which is 6, 3, 7 times by 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 meters. Okay, do you see what is happening here? This is the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth is 6.37 times by 10 to the 6 meters, okay? The amount that it's been moved up is 6.7 times by 10 to the 6. So what has actually happened? Do you agree that this is approximately double now? The distance is now double, okay? So, but all of that is squared. So what should have happened and probably was that they should have given you the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times by 10 to the 6. That should have been on the information sheet, okay? What I was looking at was whether or not it was in your general, I couldn't remember and I didn't, it, I didn't think it was, but it isn't. What, it isn't in your general information sheet, the radius of the Earth. Okay, so... They should have given you that the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times by 10 to the 6. So now we can say that, okay, fine. Originally, we had 140 times by G, M, O, M, E of R, E squared, okay? But now, our F new, sorry, let me just go back to this. Let me go change color, let me change here. Our F new, okay, is this bit here. Okay, is the same as this, but yeah, do you agree? But now this is what? Instead of it being RE plus 6.7 times by 10 to 6, do you agree that we could actually write that as what? We could write it as 2RE. It's approximately 2RE. So we've still got G, M, O, M, E, but now this is 2. Ah, RE. But it's all squared. Please remember it's all squared. So what happens? Do you agree that it becomes G M O M E over over four R E squared? But what is all of this? This is equal to a hundred and forty. So do you agree that the new force is a hundred and forty over four? Or do you agree that we could say that F nu is a quarter of the original? F nu is a quarter of the original force. We don't actually have to even work it out. And then we calculate the percentage. So it is going to be 25% of the original. It's going to be 25% of the original. Okay, everybody happy with that? Okay, let's move on to the next question. It says, satellite A is a mass of 615 kilograms and it's in orbit around the Earth. The Earth exerts a force of 5,000 newtons on satellite A to keep it in orbit. Calculate the height in kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. Okay, so we've got the Earth and we've got satellite A, okay? It has a mass of 615 kilograms. The Earth exerts a force of 5,000 newtons on it, 5,000 newtons on it, to keep it in order. It says calculate the height in kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth, okay? Calculate the height in kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. Okay, and that's 5,000. Okay, so we've got F is equal to big G, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite over R squared. Okay, that's what we're given initially. We also have the little G 
is big G big M over R squared. Just putting it out there. And we've got big G is 6.7 times by 10 to the minus 11. Now it says satellite A is a mass of 615 kilograms is in orbit around the Earth. The Earth exerts a force of 5,000 newtons on satellite to keep it in orbit. Calculate the height and kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. Another satellite mass, blah, 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 right down. Okay, never mind. So this is the second question. Okay, so do you agree that we again need to use the radius which we've been given as the radius is going to be 6.3 times by 10 to the 6 meters. That's from here to yeah okay because obviously this distance includes the radius okay so we need the radius of the earth is 6.3 times by 10 to the 6 we also have that the force is 5000 newtons right we have the mass of the satellite that is 615 kilograms. And what else do we need? We need the mass of the Earth. So again, this is a piece of information that they should have given us. And I actually do think this is on your formula sheet. Let me just quickly check. Sorry, guys. You know what it's like when you've actually been using this so much? It's not, it's not on your formula sheet. Weird. Okay, so the mass of the Earth is going to be what? Okay, let's just quickly look it up. Okay, the mass of the Earth, there we go, is 5.97 times by 10 to the 24. So it's 5.97 times by 10 to the 24 kilograms. Okay. So sure that's on the new formula sheets. Okay, anyway, so now we have got, let's have a look. We have got big G, we've got the mass of the Earth, we've got the mass of the satellite. We don't have the whole R, we've only got the radius of the Earth, this bit. They want to know this bit over here. Okay, we're going to call it X. So do you agree that the actual R is going to be the radius of the Earth plus X? Okay. So what they want us to do is work out this height. So, and we've got F. Okay, so we're going to go 5,000 is equal to big G, which is 6, 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth, which is 5.97 times by 10 to the negative 24. The mass of the spacecraft or satellite just a 615 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now solve for R where R is this entire distance the RE the radius of the earth plus the X so let's solve for R so therefore R squared is going to be 6.7 times by 10 to the minus 11 times by 5.97 times 10 to the negative 24 times by 615 all over 5,000. And then obviously to get R by itself, I have to square root both sides. So I'm going to square root this as well. So let's find our calculator and pop that in our calculator. So we've got a fraction and we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 5.9797 exponent negative 24 multiplied by 615 all over 5,000 that's supposed to be a thousand I'm not going to change it now 5,000 equals and then we have to square root the answer equals and that becomes 7 times by 10 to the negative 18. That can't be right. Oh, that's because that's as positive 24. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Suddenly the earth became minuscule. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> so sorry. 
Okay, so we've got, we might as well just do it the long way. So we got 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 5.97 exponent 24 multiplied by 615 all divided by 5, 1, 2, mm -mm. let's go back, delete, 5, 1, 2, 3, equals much better so we got 7014183 what is that 7014183 comma 49 why is it 49 because i'm rounding off to two decimal places two decimal places which means we have to look at our third one and that 8 rounds us up so that becomes 7014183,49. But remember that is in meters. And that includes the radius of the Earth. So what I have to do, I now need to subtract the radius of the Earth to get to my X. So we're going to do that. We're going to subtract the radius of the Earth. So let's go and do that. So the radius of the Earth is 6.3. So I'm going to subtract 6.3 exponent 6. Now it becomes 71,000, no, 714,000. I keep misreading these. It becomes 714,183 and again 49, comma 49. So let's write that down and then we can see what we have to do with that. So it's come 714,183,49. Am I finished? No, I'm not because this answer is in meters and they wanted the height in kilometers. So what do I need to do? In order to get from meters to kilometers, I need to divide by 1. 1,000. I need to divide by 1,000. So if I divide this by 1,000, 1,000, I get, so it goes 1, 2, 3, so I get 714,18 kilometers. So that is how high this satellite is above the surface of the Earth, is 714,18 kilometers. Okay, grade 11s, I'm going to call it a day um, for this lesson. If you would like to, um, I would like to encourage you to take a screenshot um, or just whatever, save this page and try for yourselves this question. Oops, see, I don't know what happened there. Um, here we go. Try to solve this question here. Yeah. Okay, there's another satellite, mass double, da, da 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 Because these are the type of questions that they love to actually ask, both now and in grade 12. So try that, and then on Thursday, we will continue with that, and then obviously we'll do one or two more questions, I think, and then we'll move on to the atomic model. Right, I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers.